have you ever faced injustice in your life times where you felt that you were not treated well you were looked down upon and you faced a lot of partiality i remember an incident when i was 24 years of age i just finished training for a particular job and 10 of us were selected to a company a small company comprising of two teams we went there we were so happy for the new job but all of a sudden one of my colleagues developed a relationship with my manager and she instead of working would spend a lot of time with the manager and there was another colleague of mine who would never work he would go around the place but he would slander about everybody to the manager soon the manager could not take care of the team we were missing the turnaround time for the job that we were doing and the company was coming down the management decided that all 10 are going to go out all the new employees are going to lose their job except three so what did the manager do the manager picked up these two people that woman and that employee who would not work well but just slander and there was slot for one more person so the remaining eight of us were put for a week long performance test so that one of them can be selected and guess what by god's grace i was selected as one person into that team and sadly the others lost the job things kept on going like this soon this woman and that man got promoted they got an increment in salary but the company was really going down into the dumps after one year the management sold the company and a new management took over that company guess what happened the first thing they did is that they sacked the manager and these two employees and by god's grace i was given a promotion all of a sudden now god lifted me up by his grace where my seniors were in my team friends we may face injustice in this world we may go through treatments of partiality but i want to tell you we serve a great god and he will lift us up in due time well, i want to speak to you from first peter on how to deal with partiality or injustice that is happening in our lives injustice can come in a home setting it can come in our jobs it can come through society we may face injustice through various ways but there is a biblical way to face it open with me your bibles to first peter chapter 2 verse 19 to 25 but how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it but if you suffer for doing good and you endure it this is commendable before god to this you are called because christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth when they hurled their insults at him he did not retaliate when he suffered he made no threats instead he entrusted himself to him who judges justly he himself bore our sins in the body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed for you were like sheep going astray but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls when one is going through injustice and partiality obedience in god and trusting in god is very very difficult but friends do you know that that is what we are called to do we are called to suffer for the sake of christ and when we suffer we need to trust in god that's a part of our calling we have been called to suffer and suffer sometimes for injustice that is happening to us and that's a part of being a child of god that is part of our calling peter says it is for this that we have been called verse 21 to this you were called because christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps for some of you it may be news to you we are called to suffer and sometimes suffer unjustly friends that does not mean that child of god should ask god for sufferings no we don't have to seek god for sufferings but sufferings will come our way whether you like it or not and when you suffer we must count it as a joy rejoice in our sufferings because suffering does a lot of good in our lives the implication is 
Christ suffered for us. Secondly, Christ gave us an example on how to suffer while facing injustice. And thirdly, when we suffer like this, we become partakers of the sufferings of Christ. We share in the sufferings of Christ. Well, let me explain this to you and then I will get into the practical aspect on how to face injustice in our lives. First of all, Christ suffered for us. And how did Christ suffer? Why did Christ suffer? Christ suffered as a substitutionary lamb on our place. See the substitution here in Peter's words. 1 Peter chapter 2 and it's verse 24 to 25. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Jesus bore our sins. Jesus did not do any sin. But he became a substitution for your sin and my sin. And Jesus is a perfect example. And where did Peter get this from? Peter got it from Isaiah. This idea, he borrowed it from Isaiah the prophet. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 to 5. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we are considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So very beautifully Peter is bringing out from Isaiah the prophet that Christ suffered on our behalf. He became the substitution for our sins. And why did Christ take our sins and die on our behalf? 1 Peter chapter 2 and it's verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. The very purpose Christ died for us is that we might be holy. We might die to our sins and live for holiness or righteousness of God. Amen. Friends, what an amazing example that we have in Jesus Christ. He suffered. He died. He took our place so that we might die to sin and we might become righteous. And then Peter and Isaiah goes on to say that by his wounds we are healed. What type of healing is this? I've heard many people praying and quoting this verse for physical healing. There's nothing wrong in doing that. But what Peter or Isaiah is telling is that the healing of our soul, the healing of mankind, mankind was far away from God, without a shepherd, without a God. And by the stripes of Jesus, by the wounds of Jesus, when man believes in him, we come close to God and we become spiritually healed. And that's the main aspect of this healing. Come to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So the meaning Peter is telling is that when Christ died for us, as a substitutionary lamb, so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness, we have been healed. We have been brought together to God, who is the overseer of our souls. What a beautiful privilege is that. Secondly, Christ suffered and died, leaving us an example for us to follow. What an example we can find in Jesus Christ, who suffered injustice on the cross of Calvary. Come to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 22 to 23. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. What a beautiful example has Jesus left us, friends. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. He did not talk any threats to these people. He suffered in a very tough way. He suffered injustice on the cross of Calvary, but he did not retaliate. And that is a great example for us to follow. Maybe you are going through sufferings. God does not want us to take revenge. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, 
do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult on the contrary repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing so we are called to suffer unjustly and second calling we are called to bless others to do good to others even when they are doing harm to us what a beautiful example we have in jesus christ and peter says that now paul also says that come with me to romans chapter 12 verse 19 to 20 do not take revenge my dear friends but leave room for god's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord on the contrary if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty give him something to drink in doing this you will heap burning coals on his head so when you are suffering injustice you are following the example of christ and we are not to take revenge because christ did not take revenge let god take revenge let god take the vengeance what is needed let god bring justice but we are supposed to keep quiet and give our supplications to god you may be telling me pastor what will happen if i don't take revenge because that person will get away i will tell you god is just and god will bring every deed of human beings to account probably that man can repent to god or that woman can repent to god and if they repent to god god who has forgiven you and i will forgive them also but if they do not repent god will ask for justice and god will deal with it so give the vengeance to god so how do we suffer unjustly first of all we must remember that christ died for us as a substitution secondly christ left a great example for us to follow and thirdly when we suffer we partake in christ's sufferings it is a joy for us to share in a bit of sufferings for the sake of christ philippians chapter 3 verse 10 to 11 i want to know christ yes to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead colossians chapter 1 verse 24 now i rejoice in what i am suffering for you and i fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to christ's afflictions for the sake of his body which is the church so when we suffer unjustly and when we become an example like christ to others in our suffering we are able to partake in a little bit of sufferings that christ went through on the cross of calvary we become partners of christ's sufferings with our sufferings in this world dear brothers and sisters so what did we study christ suffered for us number 1 number 2 christ gave us an amazing example of how to endure sufferings and thirdly when we suffer we partake in the sufferings of christ now coming back to practicality so how do we deal with injustice how do you deal with partiality sometimes we go through that in our day to day life well i want to give you practical inputs on how to deal with injustice first of all it is to this we were called remember that's a part of our calling to suffer for injustice second it is commendable before god third follow christ's example don't retaliate don't get bitter with your opponents fourth entrust the situation for god's judgment let god deal with the situation you by prayer and supplication give all your requirements all your needs your hurts into the hands of god and fifth god will bless you if you suffer for doing good god will bless you if you suffer for doing good first peter chapter 3 verse 14 but even if you should suffer for what is right you are blessed do not fear the threats do not be frightened dear brothers and sisters God calls you blessed when you go through sufferings in spite of doing good. I know that you can relate to this study. Most of you have done good to others and people have been bad and mean to you. They would not have helped you at the time of your need. But it is commendable before God. You are following Christ's example and God will surely bless you. I'm going to pray with you that God give you the grace. You may be going through injustice, you may be going through pain, but i pray that you will develop christ likeness and christ character so that you can be a great example of christ likeness and god will bless you for every trouble that you are going through 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time. Thank you for the word of God. You know the situations that we are in. Some of them who are watching this telecast are going through injustice, suffering for no fault of theirs. I pray that this perspective will enable them to have a practical approach in the sufferings. And we want to thank you for the promises that you have promised to bless us for all the suffering that we are going through, Lord. Thank you for giving us such an example for us on the cross of Calvary. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God richly bless you.